Hi, today I'm at PDAC in Toronto for 2024, and I'm meeting with Rowena Smith, who is the president, yes, of yes. Australian Strategic Material. Yes, okay, I got that right. <laughs> anyway, Rowena, can tell us where you stand in the supply chain for rare earths and rare earth permanent magnets. Well, we have a strategy to go from mine to metal within that supply chain. So that will start with our project in Dubbo in New South Wales, which is in advanced development. And then it goes through to our metals plants, the first of which we've built and it is in production in South Korea. Okay. And do you, do you plan to supply only metal or, you, or will you make alloys for magnet makers? So we are already making both uh, pure metal, so an NDPR metal uh, in that facility, and also the strip alloy, so the NDFEB alloy. Uh, so both of those products are currently being produced there in Korea. Okay. And um, is that going to, that's going to be used for sintered magnets, yes? Not, not as opposed to uh, uh, bonded magnets. Yes, that's right. Sintered magnets it will go into, yes. So that's, that's good. Yes. Because as far as I know, you're the first Australian company to ever do anything like that, to get that far down the supply chain. Is that correct? Uh, that is definitely correct. And in fact, we would be one of the only companies globally doing it at the moment outside of China. I know that you're, you're the primary or principal rare earth deposit in Australia is, is, is underway. What, what's your timetable on that to get something going? Well, the critical path for that is funding because we've done the engineering, the exploration work, we've got our 70-year resource, we've got our permitting, we've got our flow sheet all developed. Uh, the engineering is well advanced. And so really for us, it's uh, just completing these offtake agreements and securing the funding to be able to take FID. So from the point where we've got our funding secured, then the construction uh, program is about 27 months. So at the moment, depending on when we get funding, we would expect to be in production in 27, maybe early 28. Have, have you uh, come to North America looking for funding or end use customers? Both, absolutely, I'm, and obviously not my first trip. Uh, so it's continuing those discussions that we've had underway now with offtake parties, um, but also the last six months, um, we've had a lot of conversations with US government departments about potential US government participation in funding of the Dubbo project as well. Yeah, I understand that be because the US Department of Defense and Energy have actually invested maybe between half and $1 billion so far in rare earth, rare earth magnet projects because because of the in, in the United States we produce no rare earth metals alloys or magnets at this at this time and we have one producing rare earth mine so the idea that on our own North America's going to become self sufficient is ridiculous okay so we and and I, I I I'm in Canada so I, I have to be careful what I'd say <laughs> but and, and my I have a lot of family in Canada too so the point is that Canada, with perhaps the most rare earth discoveries in the world, you know, uh, produces nothing so far in the way of rare earths. And, and so Australia seems to be leaping ahead because Australia seems to be determined to be a critical minerals hub, so to speak. Well, we also have got a very rich endowment of the materials, but the advantage that I think that um, certainly our project has got in Australia is that we're not starting today. We started 20 years ago. And so we've done, we've done the exploration work. We've done 15 years of development on the IP to be able to do the separation and refining of the product. We've spent 10 years working on developing the IP for the metallization. We've built the metallization plant already. We're well advanced in doing the customer qualification processes with the magnet producers. So we can very rapidly provide a credible alternative supply chain to feed into those uh, magnet producers that are looking to set up here in the States. Can, can you tell us what your plan is for the capacity of your metal plant in Korea? 
So the design for the metals facility in Korea is 3,600 tonne per annum of the alloy material. We've um, installed thus far equipment uh, that gives us a 600 tonne per annum capacity, uh, but it's very easy and it will be very rapid to uh, take that from the 600 to the 3,600. And we'll do that as the customer demand um, is established. Um, but then also what we can do is either expand beyond that in a second phase expansion there in Korea or potentially we can replicate that facility in another jurisdiction. So would you, would you consider building such a plant in the United States? Absolutely. And a number of the parties that we're talking to for offtake at Dubbo, um, you know, some of them are Korean and so they're interested in the product coming through the existing facility. But, but some of them are here in the States and um, they're very interested in replicating that plant. Not necessarily immediately because they're happy to take it through Korea in the first instance, but as the, the supply chain grows, uh, then we're very open to talking about replicating uh, that facility here in the States. No, because in the United States, we don't, there's currently no metal or alloy, uh, rare earth metal or alloy making and there's a definite dearth of skills. Uh, we, we don't have a lot of people here who, who know anything about it. Or if, Because since there was no feedstock for uh, 25 years, there, what was the point of building downstream facilities? So we, it, it's the same thing in Europe, although Europe had a legacy of more, of more such facilities, but not metal making necessarily. They have one company in Europe which is making a small amount of metal, that's it. Okay, and your company in Korea, has it begun production? Yes, absolutely. How much have you produced? So we started delivering metal to our first customer there in Korea in 2022. So it's small volumes at the moment. The amount that we have produced is, is in the order of about 20 tonne that has been delivered to customers so far. Um, we've got more than that um, that is... Um, you know, in our inventory there at the moment as we're progressing these customer validation processes. But really what we want to do is we want to ramp that up when we've got security of customers. Um, and really um, what we're talking about, particularly when we visit the States, is we're talking to potential customers to say, okay, you tell us what your offtake needs are. We can expand very rapidly to be able to fulfill that. And we've got the ability, if we do put a facility here in the States, to be able to leverage both the operational know-how but also a technical team to be able to come over and train staff here in the States. Um, so that's obviously a huge advantage. I think it's very important for people to understand that one small company in Great Britain, uh, one operation in Thailand, and your operation are the only rare earth metal operations I know of outside of China, Japan, in the world, okay? And there's no way you could ever meet the demand, so you are into a seller's market. As long as we have got feed. So right. I guess the important thing for everybody to recognize is the downstream part of this supply chain is only as strong as the upstream sources that you've got. And if no one is investing in bringing projects like the Dubbo project online, then these metals plants will continue to be very small. Uh, we need to get the feed that is going to be able to enable the whole chain to grow. Well, still, the point is that you're actually making metal. Yes, absolutely. So it, it's, it gives you a lot of credibility in, in, in building your upstream mine, okay? Well, it gives comfort to the end users because, you know, particularly when we're talking to the large OEMs, you know, they want to know that they're dealing with people who are credible and um, commercially credible, but also operationally credible and technically credible. And so we can say, well, come and have a look at our facility and they can come and they can do an ESG review or they can do a product quality review. They can review our laboratory and see actually how well we're managing our um, quality um, controls so they can meet with our team, they can meet with our R&D team, and all of that gives them confidence then uh, about the way that we're going to partner going forward. Well, all I can say is that the, the rare earth market 
outside of China is rapidly uh, coming to a conclusion, okay? And those that can do will continue to do, and those that can't will have to think of something else to do. So please keep us informed on your progress, and thanks very much for the time. It's lovely to speak with you, Jack. Thank you.